Hey guys, welcome back to another video in InfoSec Pat. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Eternal Blue vulnerability. And the reason why I wanted to bring this up, and this is strictly for educational purposes, I'm doing this in a lab environment in my, in my home lab. I have my Kali machine, a Windows 7 machine that I have in my network. So this is all mine. Please don't run this without, you know, explicit permission. I'm not condoning any malicious activity or anything like that. So the reason why I bring this up is a friend of mine asked for some help about a week ago for an assessment that he was doing. And he's more on the systems networking side. And he's like, hey, Pat, can you help me, you know, find some vulnerabilities on this network? They want to do like a vulnerability assessment and a small little pen test. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was like, yeah, of course. Why not? So, you know, there's some open source vulnerability scanners. You can use OpenVos. You can run some stuff. With, but that's besides the point, right? <clears throat> well, you can just run Nmap, right? Nmap scripting engine. And you can see, and we're going to do that today. And you can see if, you, you know, the, uh, the, the endpoint or the node, the Windows 7 machine is susceptible to this vulnerability. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this and test it. And you guys can run the same process against your network. Obviously, if you have permission to do so, to make sure you're not running into these problems. Of course, if you do, you know, they're susceptible to exploitation. And if they're exploitable, it's not gonna be a happy day, right? And there's a lot of Windows 7 machines out there that are susceptible to this vulnerability. So enough of me yapping, let's get to, you know, get to the video. So <clears throat> like I said, like this is all in my lab environment. It's, it's for testing. This is all, I own all my stuff, right? Like, so this is not running on someone else's machine. This is all on my network. So, a little bit about what is internal blue and why is it's you know why is the MS17-010 exploit still relevant? Like why is it still relevant? Because people are still running Windows 7, right? So as you see here, you can read up on Advast uh, what it's about and all the exploitation and this you know the cyber attack nightmare that won't go away. <clears throat> so you can learn more about it. So, you, you know, you, oh, I think I opened two, uh, two things. So this is going to be the uh, NSC script that we can run in Nmap against that. So let's make this <clears throat> a little, whoa, let me make that a little too big. So you can see here, you can find this SMB, because it's this SMB vulnerability, dash vuln dash MS 17 dash 010. That's a vulnerability, okay? So before we get into that, <clears throat> let's just learn about what is the internal blue, right? Because I just don't want to get into the Windows 7 machine, get into Kali and do it without you guys really understanding what it is, right? So it's, the internal blue is both the given name to the series of the Microsoft, Microsoft service vulnerabilities and exploits created by the NSA, okay, as a cybersecurity tool. So although the internal blue exploit officially named MS17-010 by Microsoft, it affects only the Microsoft operating systems. So pretty much this is only going to affect um, Windows. It's not going to affect Linux or Mac, etc. <clears throat> All right. So anything that has SMB v1. So the SMB is uh, the server message block version 1. This file sharing protocol is technically at risk being targeted for ransomware and other cyber attacks. So <clears throat> maybe some of these ransomware attacks out there are getting in through this vulnerability, right? God only knows how these people are doing it, but that, that, that's no here or there, all right? So this is a little bit about it. You can just Google it and find out a little bit more about it, all right? So let's go ahead and minimize this. I want to show you this is in my lab environment. I have a Windows 7 box in my VMware right up here. And the IP address is 192.168.32.205. All right, so let's go back here. And let's go, why is it opening? Open, open. All right, so 
Let's make this a little bigger. So what we can do is try to ping that really quick. It's dot five, right? All right, so I'm able to communicate with it. That's good. So we're able to communicate with it. We can send pings, ICMP requests, and all good in the hood. So let's go back here. I made a directory here. Let's actually make this a little bigger. Call it eternal blue. Actually, I want to put the output to eternal blue. Got, I don't know, text. Doesn't matter. So we'll, we'll let that run and we'll find all the information about that machine. So we'll give this a moment, all right? So while that's doing its thing, we'll come over here and we'll open up MS, uh, MSF console. So this is Metasploit. I'm gonna use Metasploit to, 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 to compromise that system and to show you guys this process. Okay, so we'll let that do, do its thing. That's a cool design. So obviously we're still doing our reconnaissance, we're scanning, and let's open up Cherry Tree. Since we, uh, I'm big into taking notes, All right, so let's go ahead and do that. Let's do eternal blue. Okay, doom, doom, doom. Let's make it bigger so I can see. And let's go ahead and make a subnote with nmap. Okay, so we'll do nmap and we'll put the output of nmap here. So we'll just put the IP right now. So it's 192.168. Dot thirty two dot two zero five and map. Maybe this is a little a little too big. That's pretty uh pretty gigantic. But it's all okay. yeah, let me make it a little smaller. Maybe that should be good. Alright. So on the after that I want to actually go and that should be it for now. I, I don't want to go too crazy with the notes. So here we go. So let's copy all of this. Keep going, go, holy moly, I think I messed it up. All right, in one sec, let's try this again. Up, okay, copy this, and then go back to cherry tree, and do a little paste. Boom, got it all in here. All right, so let's go back, and we can go over this a little bit more. So we have ports 135, which is MSRPC. So we're running, you know this is a Windows box, obviously because I told you, but, uh, and we're, compromising a, a machine that's running a Windows vulnerability. So we have 3389, which is RDP, Remote Desktop Protocol, by default. We have 445, so this is the critical port that we're gonna be able to compromise because that's SMB v1, that's SMB. So if we come down here a little more, we can see some information, oh, it's a Windows 7 Ultimate Service Pack 1, and we can just look at SMB, SMB, you know, you can see that it's uh, SMB2 security, message signing enabled, but not required, meaning it's not really required. So we have all of our information here that we need. We have a Windows 7 VM, so we resolve the host name. It's in a work group, it's not in a domain, which I already know that, but obviously this is all from the discovery process. All right, so let's go here and let's. Come back here. Let's do a little search really quick, right? Let's search. I can spell eternal blue. Eternal blue. All right. So let's make this a little smaller. Oh, crap. Get down a little bit. That's ah, still. All right. So what we have here, we have exploits and auxiliaries. So the first thing we can do is check for the auxiliary, right? And this will see if it's susceptible to this. Uh, we, we can run it and see if it's vulnerable, okay? This is what I normally do. So what I'll do is I'll do a scanner real quick. So I'll use four, okay? So it'll bring me into there. So we do show options really quick. So we can see all of our information here. So let's just do set our host. 192.168.32.201. Okay, and we can run this. And as we see here, it says host is likely vulnerable to MS17-010, Windows 7 Ultimate Service Pack 1. 
So we can see now that it might be susceptible to this vulnerability. So we're not trying to exploit it. And we're like, oh man, it's not exploiting, why not? I'd rather do my due diligence, do some research, and do some scanning before I try to just exploit it. Okay, cool deal. All right, so now let's go ahead and let's clear this. Let's go ahead and see if we can go back up and search this again. So now we can go for the exploit, okay? So now the average exploit, so we're looking at the MS170010 uh, or 010. All right, so let's use zero now. And now we're gonna go into the exploit. Okay, now we do show options. Now we have the options here for our host, etc., etc., etc. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this. So set our host 192.168.32.205. Show options now. So now we have our, our host, which is our remote host for Windows 7 in here. So the next thing we can do is, okay, good. We already have the payload, so the payload is here. And this is the payload I'm gonna use. It's a reverse TCP. So we can get a connection back to the to Kali. Okay, so technically if we just hit run here, we'll see. We can run or exploit or whatever you wanna do. So let this do its thing for a second. We'll give this just a, a moment or so, okay? So it looks like we're gonna, okay, perfecto. If we see here, we have a session one open. So it shows that we have a connection to Windows. So if we do get UID, we can see we are system. System is the highest King Kong honcho in Windows, okay? So this is like the super user in Linux. We have the system privilege on this machine, okay? Let's go ahead and just type in shell. So it's shell, now I'm on this machine. Who am I? I'm gonna be system, host name. I'll just put how, how are you, I don't know why I was, I was thinking that. Uh, so who, uh, host name, Windows 7-VM, okay? So before we go any further, I wanna go back to my Windows 10 machine, and I only have payload here. I wanna go ahead and make a directory on this remotely. And this is how people can upload files and do all that stuff. So let's go back to here and let's just do CD WAC, now DIR. So now it's CD into users. Oh, whoops. CD to users, LS, oh, DIR. Now we have InfoSec Path, okay? So let's CD to InfoSec Path, DIR. Let's cd to desktop, dir. So we should only have payload. This is what we see on our desktop, right? So let's go ahead and make mkdir. So we're gonna make a directory called hello. Okay, so now if we do a dir, we have hello and this payload. So pretty much we're on that box. We do ip config. IP config, but if config for some reason. I guess I've been working in the Linux terminal for so many hours today. So now let's go back and go to our Windows 7 box and we have a hello. And if we go into a hello and we create a little text file saying thank you, thanks for watching. Okay, let's go, let's go back to here and DIR and CD to hello, DIR, and thanks for watching, right there. Make that nice and big. So, thanks for watching. This is pretty much it. This concludes the video. Hopefully it's been very informative for you guys. I thank you so much for checking me out. Like always, like, subscribe, share. If you have any questions about any of the things from the Nmap scan, to the Metasploit, to the Eternal Blue. Whatever you have any questions, just leave a comment in below. And until next time, have a good one, guys. Take care.